Hey guys, Ryan here. So, Power Rangers in Space. What a theme song, what a story, what zords. I feel like now, so many years later, a lot of the impact of this thing is redundant now. But remember, back at the time, this was our first spaceship zord. And our first aerial zord that wasn't based on something mythical or with wings. Astro Megazord was the shakeup we needed, a new experience for Power Rangers. I was so excited by this thing. I'd never watched Star Trek or Star Wars as a kid, so spaceships were not something I was particularly bothered by, but a spaceship that can turn into a Megazord? I was listening. I can't recall exactly when it was during this year that they got me back into the show. The Cliff Notes version for where I was with Power Rangers at the time was that I'd given up on it shortly after the Passing the Torch episodes. I knew the series was resetting to younger kids with a new cast, and the past kind of didn't matter anymore. Also, you know, peer pressure. I was getting too old for it. I was 11 years old in the last year of primary school, and it didn't seem like anyone was watching Power Rangers anymore. Or so I thought. But this series, being set in space, seemed really distinct from what we'd had in the previous five. I gradually got to grips with what was going on. When I last saw Zordon, he was going on retirement and he'd put Demetria in charge, who never made any sense or helped anyone. I think if she'd been the one to get captured, the Rangers would have just gone, oh well, that's a shame, Ernie, do you want to be the mentor now? To find out that Zordon had returned only to be captured, and that the series plot was generally a heavily serialised story about getting him back, it really served to give the show stakes again, in a way that we hadn't had since season 3 when the Rangers were trying to get their hands on the fragments of the Zeo Crystal. So yeah, I watched some episodes and I was hooked again. The uplift in appeal was night and day. In later years I would finally understand that my favourite seasons were those that could take the theme of the Sentai, but then build on it and kind of elevate the series of Power Rangers to be even better than the original. Also at the time I felt somewhat vindicated that one of the other kids in my class was talking to a crowd talking about Power Rangers in space and how good it was. He was a little bit tongue in cheek about it, he knew that it was a little bit silly, but that's kind of the right attitude to have. It also helped get my younger brother back into the show, he hadn't been watching it. It was actually the last season we would both watch together, and it was definitely going out with a bang. Also for one last time, an island family holiday, a discovery of toys ahead of the UK retailers getting them. This time it was in Smith's Toys. For the final time, my brother and I co-conspired to get our hands on some of the Zords. I went for the Astro Megazord, he went for the Mega Winger. It meant we could pretend that the Five Rangers had their Megazord and that the Silver Ranger had his. We meant to circle back around for the Delta and Mega Voyager later. In the two years since we'd brought the Ninja Megazord back from Ireland, I guess suitcase sizes or weight had decreased and unfortunately we had to leave the boxes behind. The toy history then, well this toy was from Mega Ranger and released as Denji Gatai Galaxy Mega. Of course it emerged as the Astro Megazord for Power Rangers in space. It was the first time we had a toy called a Megazord, which was not a set of five Zords. This thing was just two pieces, really, and neither were ever referred to as Zords. It was also the first Megazord, which was also the Ranger's base or command centre or power chamber. As a kid, I totally ate that stuff up. We wouldn't actually see a Megazord being used as a base again until the next series with space implied in the title, Power Rangers SPD. It's a 1998 toy, the logo became this cool silver and blue, the boxes became this like space background effect. It's kind of what partially inspired me to use space as the transition screen on this channel. It was just very distinct, it was something we hadn't had from Power Rangers before. Speaking of the design, so we had the Mega Shuttle and the Mega Ship. That was it, and that in itself was very different to what we'd been used to. I loved it, finally the show was both honouring its past, but also introducing some new elements too. Visually it's a very unashamedly blue piece, slightly harkening back two seasons to the equally very blue Zeo Megazord, but this definitely has more red accents on it than that Megazord ever got. It's got this extremely rounded design, and I think like the Turbo Zords before it, hides its transformation sequence really well. Notwithstanding the two arms and the bottom and the two fists at the back, but we ignored those. They're jet propulsors, right? This was prominently featured as the Power Rangers main Megazord for In Space. What are the differences to Bandai Japan's original toy? Well, luckily, not a lot that I can see. Bandai America were using the same moulds and stickers as their Japanese counterparts, and unlike in Turbo, were giving us chrome where they were supposed to be chrome. 
Unfortunately, they love to degrade the accessories plastic when they can. Japan got different grey colour parts for the parts of the booster rocket. I have a feeling that would probably be slightly better quality than ours, or at least more rigid. Ours has a bit rubbery texture, and that's why I don't like using them with the Astro Mega ship. Never mind that I don't think we ever saw that in the show. Really, that's it though. The one big difference is something you'd probably never even think about. What's bad about it then? Well, this one's definitely based on its age. The clips are gradually starting to wear out and break. The arm doesn't latch on as firmly in mega ship mode, half the back of the shuttle doesn't clip on in its helmet mode, one of the red clips which we'll use for the Astro Delta combination and you could technically use for the booster rockets seems to only work intermittently. But again it's a toy more than two decades old and it definitely got thrown about a bit and crash landed quite a lot by preteen me. Sorry mate. One not so based on time decay are the stickers themselves. I remember even when this thing was new they really struggled to keep their grip and I applied the dreaded sellotape to keep the cockpit window sticker attached. The reason for this are how curved all the surfaces are and how small the stickers are. They don't have enough like surface area to grip onto the curve. Now as we'll get on to in a minute the transformation is satisfying, it's complex enough but this is just a two piece Megazord and it's a shame that they didn't boost the poseability in any way. The arms were an obvious miss for elbows but that must be something to do with the pressing gimmick feature of how you transform them. But couldn't they have found a way to hide the fists a bit more maybe? The sound effect is also both good and bad. The bad being, it's a shame that the two sounds on the chest, you can't press once to activate them like you could Robo Race of the year before. The third sound will play all the way through without having to apply constant pressure, so why can't these two? What is good about it though? Well, definitely the transformation. I loved transforming this thing. I used to time how quickly I could do it. There's such an intuitive, symmetrical method to it. It really sold me on the idea of a two-part Megazord, which wasn't something I was expecting to go for. Although it was sleeker than the previous Megazords, I definitely approved of it being in the same size class and height as them. Also, attention to detail. Things like the ankle pieces that swing out on hinges to block off the back of the feet, covering the holes needed in megaship mode for the shuttle to dock into. While it still does have hollow feet, that they disguise this when stood in Megazord mode is another very considerate choice, one that I'm not really convinced we would get in today's modern Megazords. The colour scheme is really striking too. Blue, red, silver and white are the four main colours on show, and yet that works so strongly to have a Megazord made of one comprehensive colour scheme. It was also a total about turn to turbo, where all the limbs were different colours. Accessories were really generous too. As well as the shield, which always seemed really clever because of how you can store it on the base of the ship, which serves to both round out the bottom of it and also keeps the arms locked in their position a bit better. You also got the booster rocket for the mega shuttle, the one that helps it kind of escape Earth's atmosphere by itself. You can actually use it in two other ways. Detaching the boosters, they actually slot into the sides of the mega ship. I never really liked this mode though. The third way turned it into the Astro Megazord Blaster. It was really rare at the time for a Megazord to have more than one finishing weapon, both a power sword and a blaster. While Turbo was the first Megazord since the Dino Megazord to give us a shield, this is the first Megazord since the Dino Megazord where it's actually part of the vehicle mode, it doesn't just materialise out of nowhere, although admittedly the sword does. Finally there's the Astro Megazord Saber. Not my favourite power sword, I feel like this one has more in common with a butter knife. But great to get one, and just like we got in Turbo, this would be the only power sword of the whole season. I feel like it could actually use some paint, it should be silver and black, rather than the white rubbery plastic they gave us. Also being hollow on the back does nothing for it, and really kind of shows them cheaping out. I'm pretty sure this was the same for Bandai Japan though, so interesting choice. Also electronics were back, and brought us lights and sounds, with two AAA batteries. There were actually three sound effects on this Megazord, two activated by pressing buttons on its chest. Kind of an explosion sound and a kind of laser tractor beam sound. Different enough and unlike sound effects in today's Power Ranger toys, not just a recycle of what we'd had before. The third sound is actually transformation activated and you play it by attaching the shuttle helmet in Megazord mode. You can technically push it down with your fingertip too, but I remember being surprised the first time I activated it because it's a bit of a secret sound, a bit of a hidden feature. 
Astro Megazord started something in Power Rangers that we take for granted today, that being that a Megazord does not have to be comprised of five separate Zords. And sometimes your primary Megazord can also be your main transport and can also be your base. It survived for two seasons and actually two teams of rangers piloting it on the show, another first. When it was reintroduced in the next season, Lost Galaxy, they'd hilariously turned it into a museum, possibly acknowledging how major that season of the show was in allowing them to survive and continue the franchise. Unfortunately, the Lost Galaxy rangers did not treat it as well as the In Space rangers, and though we got one more Megazord appearance from it during their team-up two-parter, as it was back in control of the In Space Rangers, the Lost Galaxy Rangers would continue to keep it and annoyingly self-destruct it during their final battle of the series with Trakina. Fortunately, its legacy does continue in the series, as during the 10th anniversary, Andros revealed he'd made a Mark II version, which looked exactly the same. And as far as we know in Power Rangers series lore, that thing's still flying now. I will acknowledge it definitely looks more like a blocky robot now, kind of how you'd expect 80s ones to look. But I still have a fondness for it, it has an amazing transformation, and it represents probably the best single season in Power Rangers history. I dig it, hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching guys, if you've already subscribed then look out for my next retro review on the Delta Megazord, and if you want a look at all the In Space Swords, follow me on Instagram at PowerRangerGram. Until the next time then, see you later.